Many people will say that homeopathy is absolutely useless, and today these people would be right. Homeopathic medicine comprises a series of dilute substances which more often than not have no effect. These substances are then diluted further, rendering the ineffective substances even more ineffective. But its uselessness has proven itself to be quite useful at a few occasions in history. And we dive into the origins of homeopathy with this guy, Samuel Hahnemann. In the latter part of the 18th century, this dude went to medical school and he was clearly a smart cookie and he realised that medicine was not really doing anyone any favours. He bemoaned the fact that doctors didn't really treat their patients as human beings and more like a set of symptoms. The doctors of the time prescribed some really nasty medicine which was not worth the word and they were generally more interested in performing the autopsy once you were dead so they could learn about what was wrong with you. Hint, hint, it wasn't the flu that killed your patient. It was the mercury you gave him. The mindset of the time was that whilst medicines weren't very good, they were better than not doing anything at all. And this was not true. During a bout of yellow fever in Philadelphia, the mortality rate was around a third, until Benjamin Rush came in and started giving people mercury to treat the yellow fever. The mortality rate of his patients was nearly 50%. Granted, even the medical establishment thought that Benjamin Rush's practices were a bit excessive, but Samuel Hahnemann saw this kind of thing happening and rightfully noticed that the established medical science wasn't very sound. For a while, he worked as a translator for a bit of extra cash, and he came across a book called A Treatise on the Materia Medica, where it was claimed that chinchona bark, which is the bark of a Peruvian tree, was useful for treating malaria. Now, chinchona works against malaria because the bark contains quinine, which is still used today. However, Samuel Hahnemann did some self-experimentation and started taking the chinchona bark himself, and he noticed that it caused symptoms which kind of felt like malaria, according to him. He concluded that chinchona works because the symptoms it causes are similar to those associated with malaria. Now, it is worth noting that no one has managed to repeat Hahnemann's results, and it is now believed that he actually just had an allergic reaction. But his conclusions became the basis for the mantra that like cures like. And the symptoms that the substance caused didn't exactly have to match the disease's symptoms. The disease's symptoms just had to be a subset of the substance symptoms. And this is where you run into trouble, because this rationale would say that people with, say, mental health problems could be treated by chowing down on heavy metals. Gastrointestinal problems? Bad. Just shove some arsenic up there. Stomach pains will be solved by drinking mercury. Heartburn? Why not have some sulfuric acid? You can very clearly see that this was not a good idea, and probably even worse than conventional medicine at the time. After a while, he did start noticing that a lot of his patients stopped complaining of symptoms after treatment on account of being dead, and he reasonably suggested that maybe this was because the doses were too high. So to test this hypothesis, he did an experiment. He diluted the substances and he noticed that fewer people died after treatment. And when he diluted even more, he noticed even fewer deaths. His conclusion was that diluting the substances made the healing effects of the substances more potent whilst limiting their toxicity. This sounds like flat earth science to me, but this resulted in a second mantra of homeopathy, and which is less is more. The medicines became so dilute that there was only a marginal chance that your vial of medicine even contained a single molecule of the active substance. And this is why it worked. The issue is that at the time, people would seek treatment for things like headaches, nausea, diarrhea, or running noses. And these problems all have something in common they tend to go away after a few days. Now, by seeking contemporary medicines, the patients got worse after taking them. Instead, homeopathic medicines did nothing and allowed nature to take its course. Yes, there was a time when homeopathic medicine was better than the established medicine, because even though it didn't make you better, it also didn't kill you. Samuel Hahnemann became a huge success, and his survival rate skyrocketed due to the fact that he stopped, well, killing people, which is funny how that works.
this had a big impact on conventional medicine. The medical establishment of the 18th century understood things like concentrations, and they concluded that Hahnemann's medicines were nothing more than just water. And at this point, they started realising that maybe the orthodox medical practice wasn't really that beneficial. Now, it still took quite a while for this to cotton on completely. Calomel, or mercury chloride, was still used during the First World War. It wasn't until a few years before that when opium was still regularly used to get babies to sleep. The apparent efficacy of homeopathic remedies comes from a concept known as regression to the mean. For most minor ailments, you will find that in due course you will just get better. Similar things happen in other aspects of life. For example, when you play the fruit machines. In the UK, you'll find a sticker somewhere which says what the average payout is. It's usually around 78%. You can have a winning streak or you can have a losing streak. That just happens. And in these cases, the payout is either way higher or way lower than that 78%. And these events stand out, but just like being ill. But if you play long enough, you will find that the payout you receive will converge onto that 78%. So yeah, always quit while you're ahead, or just when you're behind, or don't gamble in the first place. It's really quite silly. A beautiful example of regression to the mean is the Sports Illustrated cover jinx. The superstition says that once an athlete is featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated, they are jinxed and their performance will decrease. To be featured on the cover, you must have just pulled off a spectacular feat or just be at the top of your game. Whether you have been featured on the cover or not, it is pretty likely that you are going to snap out of your winning streak and regress back to your mean. Of course, just like homeopathy, cherry picking is also rife when we're talking about the Sports Illustrated cover jinx. Since 2015, there have been 250 or so issues of Sports Illustrated and only 25 cases of where the Sports Illustrated jinx supposedly took effect. Homeopathy on its own is pretty dangerous. No amount of watered down onion juice is going to treat your cancer. Seek proper medical advice. However, proper medicine can learn a lot from some of the practices performed in homeopathy. A lot of homeopathic treatments can produce better results than a doctor just giving out a placebo, even though the actual remedies do the same amount of fuck all. It appears to be the interaction between a doctor and a patient that is beneficial. This is because a big part of homeopathic practice involves spending a lot of time talking to the patients and place a large focus on the overall well-being. Rather unsurprisingly, this has been shown to have some positive health outcomes. But this idea of holistic medicine is not exclusive to homeopathy. In fact, combining this idea with actual medicines which actually work appears to have far superior health outcomes. Not only does the patient start feeling better, they actually also get better. However, in a modern medical setting, this is often not practiced effectively. Overworked doctors simply do not have the capacity to spend a lot of time with a patient to achieve these goals. Many problems in modern day medicine actually come from a failure in the doctor-patient relationship, which is a large focus in homeopathy. Towards the end of Hahnemann's life, the medical establishment really started getting pretty pissed with Hahnemann. Firstly, the fame had turned him into an utter asshole, but secondly, he was getting very rich and doctors knew that he was pushing nothing more than water. In 1834, Friedrich Wilhelm von Hoven, the highest ranking public health official in Nuremberg, published a savage critique of homeopathy for its lack of scientific foundation. In 1835, a hotshot homeopath by the name of Johann Jakob Reuter responded to this critique and challenged von Hoven to try one of his C30 salt dilutions on himself to see if he felt a difference. He claimed odds of 10 to 1 that he would notice an effect. Now there's two points here. Firstly, 10 to 1 odds is a nice way of making your claim not falsifiable because your null hypothesis is part of your hypothesis then. Secondly, a C30 solution means that you dissolve salt in water such that it is 1% salt. You then take 1% and dilute that in a second vial such that the salt concentration is one tenth of the first vial. And then you take one drop from that second vial and dilute that into a third vial. So the solution of the third vial is one tenth of the concentration of the second vial. You then repeat this 30 times. Von Hoven didn't take him up on the challenge. 
he went one step further. He got a load of people in a bar. He prepared 50 vials of the C30 salt dilution and 50 vials of distilled water. He numbered them, shuffled them, and then got everyone to take a random vial and report any effects in the following weeks. The results conclusively showed that there was no difference between the water and the salt dilutions. To those in the know, you may have picked up on something here. This is a double-blind, randomized control trial. In fact, the double-blind, randomized control trial, which is the gold standard in modern medical research, was invented to test the claims made by homeopathy. To close, I will add a quick disclaimer about homeopathic remedies not killing you. This is not strictly true. There have been a series of recent cases where the manufacturer has been negligent in the dilution of the remedies, and this has resulted in some horrible deaths. In short, homeopathy made sense back in the day by virtue of the fact that it was less likely to kill you like mainstream medicine. But today the remedies are meaningless drivel and we have medicines that actually work. Ironically, we know that the current medicines work because homeopathy created the need to develop one of the main tools for performing research in medical science.